Hi all. So this is a project I was working on for a friend, uh, commissioned this giant Glen Morangi thing. So what I wanted to highlight here is that even though I have a wasteboard set up, I always have some sort of like very thin sheet good underneath. As nice, it, it, as, as understood as it is that it is a wasteboard, um, and that it is disposable, as disposable as it is, you don't want to spend all your waking moments surfacing and resurfacing this thing. It takes an awful lot of time to get it all down flush again. Also, you notice there's multiple layers here. There's not just my my wasteboard, but there's the original wasteboard, and I, I know that I don't have the precision quite yet to make sure I uh, put holes in the wasteboard exactly where carbide put them, and so I'm trying to preserve that as much as I can. So I have my wasteboard screwed on top of that, and on top of the wasteboard, and this thin sheet. This thing you gotta be careful of, uh, if you do this, this eighth inch thick stuff, is that if it's warped at all, you gotta make sure that your stock that you're putting down is going to control that warp. Keep it clamped in and around that area so it keeps the warp or the bow flat. If I knew where the cutter head was going to be in this area over here where there's like a whole sort of gutter uh, of, of where I wasn't going to cut, I would have just put some drywall screws through here and then just even fewer clamps on the far side over here. That way you, you don't introduce cutter head to clamp. What I'd like to show you is that if you look at this clamp head, like it, it seems like no matter what I do, the Shapoko just charges right at these things when cutting time is over. And sometimes you're, you're lucky and you get the plastic, but Sometimes you're not lucky and you get this and then you have to stop and re-zero and start it all over again and you know, ho hopefully you haven't snapped your bit. So a couple of things to remember when you're setting up your wasteboard. This is about as far over this way as I can possibly get with this gantry. And you notice it's kind of right over the middle of the T-track. This, this means that I can have a little bit of stock overlapping the, the edge like this and that when I, when I cut, there'll be nothing uh, underneath it. I won't have to worry about it. Also, what you can see on my wasteboard is I cut a grid. Uh, this was cut by the Shipoko itself with a, a V-bit at, I don't know, some very m marginal depth. I don't even think it's an eighth of an inch. It's a, probably a sixteenth of an inch or, or less. The steps I did is I, I used the Shipoko to draw one line right down the middle here, so I understood where I should put my screws, being the furthest over, and then I put in my first piece of T-track. Once I had that piece of T-track installed, I took a piece of MDF and just ripped uh, four equal sizes or widths rather on a table saw and then I just put in a piece of MDF, another piece of T-track, piece of MDF, another piece of T-track. You got to make sure you stay away from the very front here because if you're using a T-track you can have clamp bolts and the clamp bolts need to go somewhere in order to like get in front of the T-track so they can slide in and out of these things. Uh, same thing applies to the back you'll see that there's a clear edge here. This is as far back as the Shapoko will go in order to surface. And really what I should have done is uh, just cut this somewhere here, just, just before this line and just pull that piece of MDF off. I, I, I don't need it. And also because there's a gap here now, or there's this lip, when I go to put stock all the way in the back, it's gonna hit that. Yeah, and if I go on top of it, then there's like this weird angle. It's not sitting flush with the rest of the wasteboard. So what I really should do is remove this. So just think about those kinds of things. Also, you notice that um, the screws are, uh, they're countersunk. Uh, but occasionally if I've made a mistake. So this was a uh, part of a bench that I made But obviously the cut depth was wrong for whatever reason. I don't even remember how it got so wrong But screws are all uh, countersunk at this depth um, Which is almost a quarter of an inch. Uh, I hit these the screw heads and so in, in my mind if I had to if I was um, th This wasteboard that I put on top of the original Shapoko Shep wasteboard has so much life in it that I would, I would resurface it resurface it resurfaces and I said it to myself if I get close to the heads of these screws i'm just going to pull it out and then i'll uh, again i'll cut i'll cut widths uh, i'll cut mdf this width uh, in, in my head uh, i don't think it matters for the next cut if it goes from t-track to t-track or i'm like quarter of an inch in board of that thing it, it's pretty you know when you put your stock over this it's pretty well supported i've also seen people do t-track grids uh, where there's like a, an x pattern and i kind of wish i had done that because just having the t-track clamping this way uh kind of stinks when you know you can't quite reach the center of your board right so if you if you wanted to get something that was here to here for whatever reason, you're never going to reach it. And you really shouldn't use your clamp like this, uh, as I, I've learned. Really, this is the way this this particular clamp is designed, is to 
have the shorter end with the steeper curve that you can apply more clamping force. Yeah, don't, don't ask about this missing screw. This is me getting a little too aggressive with the impact driver. So there's just a hole down there. <laughs> there's more place for a screw. Anyway, uh, so that's largely how I've set up my 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 T-Track and my my wasteboard. 